In order for profound reform in education to occur, you're going to have to have some people who have a very, very thorough knowledge of philosophy. Um, and obviously, you know, the key players in educational philosophy. And unfortunately, you don't really see much emphasis in educational philosophy these days because, I mean, how many people who are teaching either at the college level or at the public level, how many of them have heard of pa um, Paulo Freire? And it's really tragic that you don't see Paulo Freire's name more in the, the polemic conversation. Freire is, in my opinion, one of the most important theorists to ever live, and I almost feel like there should be more of a pop cultural awareness of who he was, and yet most of what I see with Freire assumes that he's some type of radical, um, and a lot of the same attitudes are taken to Saul Alinsky, and Alinsky seems to have really owned up to his political, you know, hotbedness. Um, the observations of Freire can be very much echoed in the, uh, the writing and the uh, lectures of Sir Ken Robinson, another one of my heroes in the field. Um, the basic idea is, is that the way that we educate students and the way that we teach them is fundamentally damaging. It's, it's actually extremely counterproductive. Um, most people engage with what Freire called banking method education. And I actually did a huge project about this. Um, I really wish I could go back and um, access the material, but it was so long ago. Um, but banking education is basically what you see in uh, modern assessment in the American system. It's when you input information into the brain for it to be regurgitated later. Um, when you have standardized tests, multiple choice questions, where you're simply responding to, you know, basic identification questions, you're, you're doing banking method education. Well, everybody knows that banking method is bad, that it's unpleasant, it doesn't work very well. Friere um, <clears throat> took a little bit of a Marxist approach to an analysis of banking method, and what he found was, is, or at least what he theorized, was that banking method education does something infinitely worse than just being bad education. And this is a theme that has run through my career as a teacher, that um, bad teachers don't just set you back in the process of your education. Truly bad teachers harm you, actually input information that is destructive. Um, what banking method does is it trains you to obedience of authority by assumption. And you can actually look at this process playing out anytime you're in a classroom. When you've got the instructor on the stage, when you've got all of the students facing in one direction, um, subservient to the commands of that teacher, responding in the way that they are supposed to respond, and basically, you know, just being a, re a reservoir for that person's learnedness, you have a population that has effectively lost their identity, lost their autonomy to deal with complicated subjects, and that makes for a population that is A, easily controlled, and B, they're not very dynamic. They don't do much. Um... This, this is, in my opinion, one of the most profound things that we have missed about classroom design, especially as we move into the modern era where, you know, companies need thinkers who are dynamic, need people with more capability rather than just knowing things. And yet most instructors still hold to the banking methodology and what's worse and you know, it's it's all fast fashion to hate on No Child Left Behind and to hate on Common Core. But most of our assessment structures, most of the ways that we measure student learning are still directly tied to the banking method. So you're, you're measuring incompetence. You are measuring a lack of ability. You're measuring a student's ability to be a robot. Now, this doesn't mean that, you know, assessment of a more complicated flavor is going to be easy. It is possible, but it's not going to be easy. Um, 
this is a real societal problem. When we've got students basically being processed like meat through an industrial system, again, referring to Ken Robinson and referring to many of the amazing things that he highlighted in his RSA animate, you have to understand, this is so many far-reaching ramifications. It's not just that our educational system is problematic. It's not that it's not efficient. It's that it is effectively harming our students. It's taking something away from them that they otherwise would have. It's, I'm very passionate about this, and I really want to move into advocacy work to try to lessen the emphasis on, this types of asses- on these types of assessment. Um, I do view them as so fundamentally flawed that many of the societal problems that we have as far as behavior, as far as identity, as far as you know, people being able to take control of their lives, when I have students come through my classroom and they can't submit papers and they struggle just to even engage with the class, part of the reason that's happening is because their engagement has been stripped from them. They're trained not to engage with material. They're trained to be subservient and absorption, you know, they're being agents of absorption. Without massive rebuilding in the field, you're looking at a collapse. You're looking at just untold problems, both in, you know, both in autonomy and in performance. This is the real reason why uh, we fail in comparison to other countries. It's not our testing. Our testing, well, it is our testing. It's, it's, it's basically pressing our students into a mold that does them absolutely no benefit. Um, Paolo Freire, Pedagogy of the Oppressed, um, would love to post more and you know explore this further, especially as you know I work with the concept of advocacy and educating the public on how people learn and the consequences of bad learning.